In today's third episode, we are going to explore to unlock crucial production machines, upgrade our iron and copper mining setups, automate the creation of plant matter, and finally automate the cranking of the crank generators. So do me a huge favor, like the video, sit back, and enjoy. All right, so we'll start this episode by doing some exploration. We are going to go visit this RH location. The reason for that is we are going to start unlocking a few different techs that we are going to need. We are also going to grab all these plants that look like this on the way. These are Kindle Vines plants, and we are going to need them very soon. Scan this. This is a high voltage cable that we are going to need later on. We're also going to grab all these blue plants too. These are the shiver thorn and they are the other plants that we are going to need a lot of. Before we head to RH though, we are just going to cut through right here. You can see that there's a big opening right here. So that's where we want to go. We'll break through. And in here, we're going to find a lot more of this shiver thorn. And we're going to grab as much as we can. So now you can see we need to get into this building right here. And the way to do that, we'll just follow it along the edge. Keep grabbing our shiver thorn. And then you can just build a tunnel. And then we're just going to keep going around this fence. And there you go. Scan this. And we'll scan the tech. Door unpowered and secured. So for this, we'll just need to put down a crank generator on the power floors. And then you just activate it and the door will now open. Power restored. Jackpot. A warehouse. I knew that gigantic door was a good sign. Scan this place for some basic electrical machines, especially those planters and brushers on the racks. And pick up anything else you can find. We're going to grab all these inserters. They are a new kind. These are filter inserters. So they allow you to take out a certain item out of a machine. And these are the monorails. Now, none of these storage have anything. They're just fully empty. This is our second blue research core fragment. And we have more Mark II belts and filter inserters in this chest. And keep picking up all these filter inserters. Lots of good tech fragments here, but... I doubt we'll find anyone to rescue. People would take what they needed and get back out there. Okay, now we'll grab the planters. The planters are used to grow the seeds that we have been picking up into full grown plants. And these are the threshers. So once these plants grow, these threshers will break down the plants to materials that we can then send for processing. The last thing we need to do in this building is go over here. Task inbound. Supply facility access door with self-repair materials. Tier 4 technology required to manufacture. Look through the window, Breaker. I can literally see the mining charge tech fragment on that table. What kind of miserable bureaucrat puts high explosives behind a securely locked door? You think we would be here if we didn't know what we were doing? I want you to fix that door as soon as possible. I want you to blow things up. This is super fun to use, and I use it all the time, especially for traveling and getting those green crates that are hidden. So we don't need this here anymore, so we'll grab it, and we'll start heading back to our main factory so that we can unload the stuff we have before we go visit the second area that we want to go visit. So we'll just dump our plant matter and limestone in these storage containers. And we're just going to grab whatever purple cores have been crafted. We're going to go drop them in the box. And then we are going to crank the cranks. Now we'll start heading to the second location that we want to visit. So we'll head down this river. We are going to keep grabbing all the Kindle Vine and Shiver Thorn that we see. Break through here. When the river splits, we'll head to the left. The sooner you scan these water wheels, the closer you'll be to never having to turn a crank generator again. We should check out that office, too. 
scan the third blue research core fragment and then these water wheels right here we want to grab every single one that we can they will give us some components these things are what we want in order to automate the cranks of the the power generators now later on we can utilize this area because you can see there's already a lot of crank generators and some working wheels here we could just refill the area here with a few of the machines and it'll give us a boost of power that we can use with our factory but we won't be able to really do that right now until we get the high power cables that are over here two upgrades down the road so here it's telling us that we like a, an insane amount of resources to open the door but we can't really afford that right now but if you go to the roof the roof has been collapsed so you can just completely ignore I like that. the way you think, Breaker. Why fix the door when the ceiling is wide open? So we'll scan everything in here. Including this big rock in the middle of the room. If this rock had fallen on the facility from above, the protection zone around the structure would have held it in place until it could either be pushed away or drilled apart. For it to have punched through like this, the weight would have had to slowly penetrate the protection zone over... Honestly, I don't know how long. A lot longer than we were going to be here. All right, so now we'll just head on over to the other side. And there's another building right here. So we'll just go see what it requires in order to open. So here we need some monorail tracks and cooling system. So it's good to know, but we won't be able to open that one for a little bit. So we have two goals right now. We want to automate the production of the seeds and whatever they produce. They will be producing overall the plant matter frames that we are going to need to unlock the next stage. We also want to unlock the water wheel here as soon as we can. So we'll have to do one upgrade before we can use it. First, however, we want to set up these cores to go to the core composers automatically. So we're just going to go this way. We are going to bring this down like this and we'll just put a couple inserters and there you go while we are here we're just gonna crank these guys we're actually going to need a lot more crank generators so we might as well just put down what we can right now before we do anything else though we need to automate sending the bio brick to the iron and copper mining facilities and we want to automate the limestone and bring it over here we'll put down a couple of these inserters and we'll start belting this all the way to the mining facility of the iron and here you go so what i did here is i belted down our bio brick down to every miner that we have i actually added an extra miner over here as for the smelters i just branched off the bio brick and I just brought the line all the way down here and used long inserters in order to take the bio brick. And I also had to move the iron container over here in order to make room for this belt. We now need to use our cores available. So we'll unlock the core composer and the tool belt too, so we can have more slots in our inventory. Now we should bring our bio brick to the copper mining facility. And here you go for the copper side. For this one, I just branched off the bio brick into two lines. The first one heads down the miner route over here to the right. And then the other one just goes down the smelter line and eventually feeds into two other miners. I added an extra miner over here also for the copper to match the iron and added an extra smelter to process that extra ore. And the reason I did that is because now I added back our inserter to store one of the ingots that are being made in order to start saving up the ingots for the upgrades. Now we'll start working on bringing the limestone over. We'll expand this just a little bit so that it makes it easier to work with. We'll add two miners, leaving two spaces in between each. And then belt and add the inserters for the miners.
to the limestone area. And we could actually utilize the other side. Like this. I added another miner. And I did the same thing here for the limestone. Just added the bio brick to come straight here into the three miners. And I also doubled the assemblers here for the bio brick in order to have more bio brick produced. And we'll get the bio dance to upgrade in order to make our bio brick last longer. Next, we want to automate the filter inserters. For the filter inserters here, we actually need just some regular inserters and some electrical components. Now the electrical components, we actually need just some iron ingots and copper wire. All right, so what we are going to need to do here first is slap an assembler somewhere over here. And for this, we need to grab some of those in order to just produce some inserters. Once we have those ready, we'll move it into this, which will be our filter inserters. Then the filter inserters need some electrical components, which also need some wires. So for now, we'll just grab a long inserter, bring the copper in here. That makes the wires. We'll add three inserters. We also need to have access to the iron ingots here. So we'll delete those and branch off and bring that down over here. Then we'll just repair the other two lines. Do this. This produces some electrical components. They require one ingot. And then the electrical component is actually going to be sent to the other assembler. And then from here, we need the wire assembler. And for that, we just need a long inserter followed by a few inserters to send them into here. We'll place down a storage and some inserters. And now we're automating our filter inserters. Now we build a second floor. And after crafting some planters, we are going to add six of them down in total. And we'll start by adding the, the Kindle vines in them so they can start producing. I forgot to add the power to the second floor. So we'll just build a little tower from the first to the second floor like this. All right. So what we want to do here is add a belt that goes like this. And that goes and does a circle. But we'll skip two rows and come back. Like this. Then we'll add an insert going from the belt into here. We'll add another belt coming in this way and a inserter heading out of the planters into this other belt. Then we'll start dealing with the threshers. We'll add a thresher with the four inputs facing on the side of the planters over here. We'll skip three rows every time. So here we are going to start using our filter inserters and use a long inserter to grab the Kindle vine. I'm actually going to do this for all of them. And now we have this problem now where we want to be able to offload both of these or else if one of these fills up, most likely this one, then the machine will stop producing the other one. You'll want to continuously get rid of all of these in order for the machine to function properly. We'll manually place these seeds in. So now in order to expand, I'm leaving room to expand that way if we ever want to. So I'm just going to bring a line down. And on this line, this is where we are going to actually output. You'll notice that this uses a one to four ratio. So this goes up by one and this goes up by four every time. So to properly manage this, what we technically need to do is add four filter inserters per thresher in order to output the right amount. The filters here will want to set it to be grabbing the Kindle Vine stems. And for the ones in the back, 
we want to grab the seeds. So you can see now we're outputting the seeds back onto this line and then they are going to go back into the planters. So eventually you won't you won't need to keep grabbing these out on the ground because you're producing some through this process. The next step now is to use these and convert them into the next process of the chain, which is plant matter fiber. So now we put the threshers. We're actually going to leave two spaces away from the other belt. We're going to rotate it so that the four outputs or inputs are facing on the right hand side this time. So I'll put the first one so it lines up, but then I'll, I'll leave three spaces and I'll add one behind here and then I'll add the other one here. So we'll add a th three total also. We'll probably, we'll, we'll just add four here just so that we have them, but I don't think we're going to need four. We'll add long inserters in order to grab the Kindle vine stems. Now we need to belt up every single side like this because we actually need every single output. We'll add a storage chest and just put an inserter to grab all of the extra Kindle Vine stems that we are not processing. But for the outputs here, we'll just want to three filter inserters on every machine. We'll go crank the cranks and grab more filters. And I think now's a good time to expand here while we're here. All right, we'll grab some filter inserters. Wow, it's quite a bit already. Nice. Back over here now, we'll set all of these filter inserters to be taking out the Kindle Vine extract. We'll also need four filter inserters on all the outputs over here. So we might as well do that right now. And the other ones, at least the last three anyways. Here's the problem with this one. These guys, they go up by four. And these ones also go up by four. So it's a four, four, right? To properly empty the machine, you need eight outputs and we only have like seven. So what we can do is only so that there's no like issues with ratios is actually just leave one output not being used. Now we'll just bring all the Kindle vine down. So we'll make a belt that goes all the way back down to our first Kindle Vine extract line here. And then we'll just connect all of the Kindle Vine lines to this other main line. And then we'll bring a line all the way down for the fiber, just like this also. We'll set these other ones to be taking out the plant matter fiber. And since I'm encumbered, I'm going to drop these iron ingots in the terminal so that we can have our full speed again. And now the power's out. So we'll go and crank the cranks again. And while we're here, we'll dump the cores in the storage by the core composer. And since we're here, we'll actually add a second core composer since the first one is full. And then we'll grab some long inserters and just start transferring the extras. Looking at these planters here, there doesn't seem to be any issues with having enough seeds. Now, if we really wanted to, what we could do here is just go ahead and just fill the line up a little bit. So that let's say half the line is full and then we could take this out. The next thing we need to do now is to process these plant matter fiber into actually plant matter frames. We need assemblers in order to produce the plant matter. So we'll add a, like four or so assemblers just for now. We'll have a line coming out from here, heading down. We'll set all of these to be doing plant matter. We'll bring this line all the way down. So we'll add two inserters to each one of these and then we'll output one inserter each. 
Next, we need to do something with the Kindle Vine or else the production line will back up. So we'll bring the Kindle Vine in this area right here. We are going to need this Kindle Vine for a lot of things. But for now, what we can actually do with it is convert it into some limestone. And then we'll just slap the limestone in a box here. And then we'll also add another box where it's just the Kindle Vine. Since the last thresher is struggling just a little bit to produce, we are going to add three more planters just to make sure we give out enough seeds. And then we'll add two more inserters for the Kindle Vine. And right now we're just trying to match our output of the assemblers. So the assemblers are we're using a total right now of eight. And these two do two each. So that's four, five, six, plus these two that makes eight. So now we've got eight and you can see we have three, three, two. So we have another four that we can use. So what we could do is add another two assemblers. We'll want to store the plant matter frames for now. So we'll just add a container. We'll extend this here. Oops. Grab two of each here. So we just added four more here. So we should add four more over here too to match. Except we are actually producing way too many of them. And we don't have that many Mark II belts, so I don't want to go ahead and upgrade everything right now. So we'll just delete the last thresher over here. And we're going to remove one of the assemblers also. And I'll just add more inserters here to store more in the storage for now. We have a ton of cores now, so we'll do some research. We'll get the processor unit that we need for the fast inserters. I think it's important to increase our pack size for now. And we'll increase the mole speed also. And just like in general, just get everything we can. I don't use beacons and I don't use mass collect. I do think all those are fairly useless personally, but everything else we can start activating. So we'll start crafting some of these fast inserters. We are going to need them and we should have enough plant matter now. Yes, we do. So we are going to go and unlock this next phase. Terminal upgraded. New technologies and recommended tasks available. The tech tree is really opening up now, Breaker. Water wheels and mining charges are both going to be things I promise you won't know how you got this far without. Cooling systems will probably help you open up a lot of broken, overheated facility doors in the sector too. And keep an eye out for those blue research core fragments. All right, so one of the last things we are going to do here in this video is get access to these water wheels. Luckily, we have core reassignment, so we can actively go back in time and repair our mistakes here. Get rid of this, get rid of that, and go and grab the water wheel. All right, so this, without a doubt, is what we are, we're just gonna do all of them. We're gonna do all 12. We're actually, actually, we're gonna cancel all everything, and we're just gonna go straight into 12 of these gonna take a while gonna take a while that's for sure but it's gonna be worth it it's going to be worth it automating the water wheels is fairly easy we need the mechanical components and the electrical components so the mechanical components are coming here we've got these guys here and we just need some iron what we could do right now is just go ahead and pop an assembler down we'll have to allow the iron to come down We'll set this to be doing iron frames. We'll grab the mechanical components and the electrical components. We'll 
We'll put the assembler down like this. Grab this. Grab that. Grab that. And this will make the water wheel. And then we'll just add a storage. And now we get to place down our water wheels. Finally. This power won't last for us for much longer, but at least for now, we don't have to crank every two seconds. We still have a bit of room here, so. So because we just added three more, we should be able to add six more crank generators. So we'll just do that real quick. So now we're starting to have a little bit of extra power. And the beauty of this was we'll be able to upgrade these later and not have to worry too much about it. There, so we upgrade this little section just so that we can start using whatever's in here. I'd like to thank all my Patreons who make these types of videos possible.